Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to see about the requirements of an ideal rail. But before this, if you haven't watched the video regarding what is a rail, where is it, where is it placed in the typical cross section of a railway track, and all the functions of the ideal rail, please go check that video in my channel because that is a prerequisite to watch this video. Okay, coming back to today's topic, we are seeing about requirements of an ideal rail. The main requirements of an ideal rail section are as under. The section of the rail should be such that the load of the wheels is transferred to the sleepers without exceeding the permissible stresses. See, this point explains us that whatever loads that are taken by the rail, that is the thermal stresses, the load, the stresses developed due to the vertical loads and also the lateral loads, whatever the stresses that are developed, that should be within the permissible stresses. Okay, that is, it should not undergo more than the expected or designed displacement. Okay, it should be able to resist the loads. Coming to the second point, the section of the rail should be able to withstand the lateral forces caused due to the fast moving trains. See, initially the loads that are acting on the rail are vertical in direction. But because of this fast moving trains, that is because of the vibratory forces, or because of the dynamic forces that are acting on the rail, there develops a lateral force. Okay, that is because of this fast moving trains. The rail should also be able to resist this, resist this lateral forces. Okay, next, the underside of the head and top of the foot of the rail section should be of such a slope that the fish plates fit snugly. Okay, first let me explain you what is a fish plate. Fish plates are used at rail joints to maintain the continuity of rails and to provide gap for extension and contraction. That is, it is provided at every rail joint. Between every rail, we are providing a fish plate to which two poles on this side, two poles on the other side are placed to connect one rail to the another. I will show you in a diagrammatic view. See, this is a rail. Two rails are joined by using a fish plate to which two fish bowls are placed on this side and two on that side. This is a fish bowl. That is a joint, joint of two rails. This fish plates will also provide some gap for expansion and contraction. For each joint, two fish plates are required. That is one to the, one on either side of a joint, okay. Fish plates and rails are held together by means of four fish bowls. Okay? Yes. Coming back to our problem, the underside of the head and top of the foot. Underside of head and top of the foot. That is, see this is a rail we are talking. We are saying that the underside of head and top of the foot. See this is the head part and this is the foot part. The underside of head that is this portion and the upper side of the foot, this portion, should be such that the fish plates, see this is the fish plate I showed you before, right? So, it should be such that the fish plates can be fit snugly. Okay? Yes. Next, coming to a fourth point. The center of gravity of the rail section should preferably coincide with the center of the height of the rail so that the maximum tensile and compressive stresses are nearly equal. Okay. The center of gravity of the rail section. See, this is a rail section. The center of gravity, the CG of this rail section should be preferably coincide with the center of the height of the rail. See, center of the height of the rail is, see, this is a height. Center of the height means, that is, this is H by 2. Okay. The CG of this I section, that is, the CG of this rail should be or like should preferably coincide with that of the central height of this that is at the h by 2 that should be there that is to maintain the maximum tensile and compressive stresses to be equal okay yes next going to the next point the web of the rail section should be such that it can safely bear the vertical load without buckling okay see 
in this drawing see this is a very rough diagrammatic representation please don't consider how it is just take the main points see we have this two these two are called as flanges whereas this middle one is called as a web the web should be such that it can safely bear the vertical load whatever the vertical load is acting it should be able to take without any buckling buckling is see initially the web is in, is like this but because of the applied load it may buckle see it may buckle initially it is like this it is now buckling it is bending okay so it should resist that the head of the rail should be sufficiently thick for adequate margin of vertical wear the head of the rail should be sufficiently thick this is the thickness of the web the head the top, the head of the rail okay that should be sufficiently thick to resist all the vertical loads acting without any deformation next the foot of the rail should provide sufficient bearing area on the underlying sleepers so that the compressive stresses on timber sleeper remain within permissible limits that is whatever the loads that are acting on this which will be carried by this rail will be again transmitted to other parts beneath that right see if you haven't watched the video regarding the location of the rail and the uh, functions of the rail please go watch that video because you will be betterly understanding this video after seeing that because that is the prerequisite as as i already mentioned okay next the foot of the rail should provide sufficient bearing area on the underlying sleepers that is see whenever a timber is having whenever a timber sleeper we are having the load that we are that this rail is taking it should distribute over a larger area just to maintain safety okay next the section of the rails should be such that the ends of two adjacent rails can be efficiently jointed with a pair of fish plates see i already told you we were talking about the bottom of the head section and the above of the foot section now we are just talking about the section of the rails at the ends that is the end at which the another rail is connected okay we are connecting one rail with the another one right so the sections that is a joint should be such that the fish plates can be fixed snugly okay the surfaces for the rail table and gauge face should be sufficiently hard to resist the wear okay the surfaces of rail table and gauge face that is this faces whatever the loads they are taking it should be such that it should resist the wear and tear because of the loads acting and other environmental factors causing the wear and tear uh, we also have some other requirements for a good rail that is it should possess proper composition of steel okay proper composition of steel should be there next the vertical stiffness should be high to transmit the loads to the sleepers beneath whatever the loads that are transmitted to the sleepers that are beneath this for that the vertical stiffness should be high we are also talking about the lateral forces it should also be able to withstand the lateral forces caused because of the dynamic and vibratory forces because of the fast moving trains okay next the distribution of material in head web and foot of the rail should be balanced see no material should be stuffed in any part of this rail such that it is imbalanced okay everything should be as per the codal provisions or as per the loads that are acting it should be very balanced in nature okay that is it for this video guys please like share comment to my channel please subscribe to my channel that would greatly encourage me i appreciate you watching this video thank you